Hello everyone, my name is Shaderock, and this is the next part in a multi-part series where me and my friend PK Katsune are talking about our experiences in the game Final Fantasy XIV. Each one is split by expansion. Uh, if you want to see it from the start, there's going to be a playlist that will take you back to our thoughts on A Realm Reborn, and just keep in mind there will be spoilers ahead. Without further ado, let's get on to this video. And here we are finally, Shadowbringers, the most recent expansion until, well, as of time this video going up, early access starts four tomorrow. Days. Well, four days. Four days as of recording, uh, early access one day as of upload. Uh, but uh, yes, Shadowbringers was our last massive expansion before the highly anticipated Endwalker. Oh man. Oh man. And Shadowbringers was our first expansion that we played when it was brand new. Like, we were still a little bit behind. Well, you were. I was there day one. You were there day one? Okay. Well, I was. Yeah, I was still. I was still in. I think I was still in. I think we're level grinding. I believe that I was still in uh, Stormblood. Like. Uh. Stormblade itself, not post Stormblood. I was. I was kind of annoyed because I had early access, but I didn't get to use it. Yeah. And that actually almost happened this go too. Yeah. Because um, and then, well, they needed to to change things up for the anticipated uh, the I, amount I, of players we'd probably be getting. I know everyone's freaking out about the delay, but I'm, I'm actually kind of thankful for it because it means I can I'm use fine with the delay. It means I get to use my early access. I'm fine with the delay because it means that people need... that people were able to get things ready. Make some, some last-minute checks. But we're not here to talk about Endwalker. Shadowbringers. Shadowbringers. Shadowbringers sees us leave our world and come over to the world of the first. And if you don't know what the first means, well, uh, you need to go back and play the game. I'm but sorry. Yeah, um, you need to find out more about this plot, and the plot is told through the game. Yeah, um, we came to a whole new world, and it is... We see a lot of familiar races, characters, and all that stuff. Well, mostly races. But, um... It still feels very different compared to what we were used to. Yeah, it feels very different compared to our home. And it's for one thing, there's these really weird, almost angel-like things trying to eat us. And yes, and while we are here, as my friend has just brought up, we are not the warriors of light in this world because the light is. Evil. Out of control. We are the warriors of age. I mean darkness. Darkness, 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 <laughs> as some people might call it. Yeah, um... This sees us fight the Sin Eaters, we deal with a whole lot of new enemies, we get two new jobs in this expansion, which we'll talk about later. But overall, this story, in terms of base Shadowbringers before the updates, is still amazingly well written. Oh, I gotta give props to the scenario writer. She's the same scenario writer that had done not only the Dark Knight job questline, but also had done the Rogue questline. Which, when you look back, you can definitely see her influence on both questlines. They build the characters rather than just building the job itself. I'm going a step further. Um, then we, we have our main villain for this main part of the arc, and he's a lot of fun, but um, a lot of people pointed out at the end, uh, he kind of started to remind him of Chris McLeod from Double Drama. <laughs> or Chris McLean. Uh-huh. To the point someone photoshopped him into the uh, Total Drama style, like, Welcome, Warriors of Darkness, to your next challenge! <laughs> like, I wish I, you were wrong. 
I, I'm like, I hate it. I hate this so much, but I also love it. I, I really wish you were wrong, but Emmett Selk does give those vibes. And it is, he's an interesting character, but the, the stuff until 5.3, though. Holy shit! Yeah. It is a whole other level than on top of it, the final boss. The true. Which has given the us true so many boss. memes. Yes. Uh, uh, and you know, try, can I, may I suggest let's not talk about the story content from 5.4 onward? We're not gonna, I say we don't talk about most of the story content for Shadowbringers. True, but no, I just mean let's not talk about it. We will not talk about the pre Endwalker at all. Yeah. <laughs> it, it will leave you on this. It's really good. It's set up this expansion. It has us hyped. Yep. Um. <sighs> yeah. Now let's let's actually talk about the two new jobs, the Gunbreaker and the Dancer. All right. You have more of a take on both of these jobs. Gunbreaker is a weird job to talk about. To quote Joe Cat's Crap Guide to Tanking. Gunbreaker is 3 DPS in a trench coat. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's, it is a very I, aggressive tank. Yes, it is. Um, you get a lot more cooldowns than any other job, really. You because you get two for defense. You get a self. Uh, one that increases your regeneration, and one increases your um damage. You also have a self barrier in your combo. Yeah. On top of yourself. Yeah. In terms of one on one have... tanking, like in terms of like if it was just them in a one on one fight, Gunbreaker has a little bit more versatility, especially. But it does not have the sustainability. Yeah, it does not have the sustainability. Well, Grant, nothing has the sustainability of say Dark Knight or yeah. a, or a max level Paladin. Yeah. It's but, just. Because uh, for those who are unaware, gonna... Dark Knight has the best damage mitigation in the game. Yeah, and looks like it's keeping it. So, well. Yeah, with, yeah I don't think, for my list, it doesn't look like it's received any changes. Not a lot. Um. The, the thing is with Gunbreaker, though, is its main combo, and then it ends with the, the Gnashing Fang combo, which can deal a lot of damage in one on one. Mm -hmm. Even the self barrier Wait. actually adds a little bit more sustainability to it. And yeah. on top of it, Heart of Stone makes Gunbreakers an amazing off tank. Yeah. Because um, if you pass Aura and Heart of Stone onto your main tank, it makes them even more powerful. Yep. Um, yeah. And it looks like with the next expansion, we're getting some updates to. It, and we're also, I think we're also getting like the gnashing fan combos getting uh, a single dense. button. Yeah, it's getting condensed to a single button, which, thank Christ. Yeah. I did mention Stormbow, but also uh, Red Mage and Endwalker's getting a change, and um, and Bolden's getting fixed. Those on our Bolden had an issue where it, to your allies, it only gave a physical boost, which was worthless for the mages. Yeah. Say if you're in a party of all mages. And one tank. Yeah, it's that'd be pretty flat. useless. It's been changed to be a flat DPS boost, which uh, Red Mage Works has been better. asking. For, yeah, Red Mage has been asking for since Stormblood. Yeah. But um, you know, it's Gunbreakers are very good class in honesty. If you want, if you want to get start getting into tank, it's very user friendly. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't need to worry about like a lot of stuff. You just gotta worry about your cartridges and your keeping yourself alive. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, you because... um, mainly because uh, because you're D three DPS in a trench coat, you're a lot squishier than the other tanks. You also have the one of the absolute worst um, invincibility abilities in the tank class. Yeah, you shoot yourself in the face. You become immune to all damage, well, almost all damage, but you are reduced to 1 HP. The only things yeah. that can pierce it are tank busters. Although, I will still say that Dark Knights is worse. You know, I that's why I said it's 1 of. Dark Knights is actually worse, because uh, Dark Knight puts you into a death state, and if you don't no. fully... Not exactly. 
Yeah, what it could. is is you get put put in a status where if you go below zero HP, you st you keep you keep yourself alive, but you need to be you still need to be like full healed back up within a certain time frame or you die. Yeah. And you're not invincible during the thing at all. Like if you paired with a white mage and you let them know you're using it, it's very easy to counter because you just have them use benediction. Yeah. But the same can be said with um, Super Boil for Gunbreaker, and it doesn't have as massive of a risk. Yeah. But, um, the other one is the King of Supports! The Dancer. The good old Dancer. The dancer you, class is... You're a dancing queen. As, a, as the Dancer, you will pair with another... Well, when, eventually you'll get the ability to pair with another party member. While you are paired, it all starts of starts out with this ability, yeah. mind you. It, but it doesn't really start to shine till later. It it doesn't you don't get like access to it unless you're level sixty, I believe. I believe so, yeah. Um, Otherwise you're just applying a buff to yourself. Yeah, so what you can do is with a partner is you get a buff for for using your dance skill. Uh they get the buff with it, and for your later ones like uh, you get abilities like Shield Samba and Curing Waltz. Not only will it proc on you, it'll proc on your partner. And that means it it spreads out from your partner as well. So, partner so you have ba you have almost raid wide ap application to your buffs. The, the normal way I recommend playing Dancer is you make a part use a melee DPS or a tank as your dance partner, and then you stay with the mages while they are in the front line. And you yeah. can cover the entire raid party. Um, also, if you are desperate for health and your healers are ignoring you, stand near your partner and curing waltz procs twice. Yep, because it goes from your burst to their burst. Um, you also a proc very, twice. It is a very versatile support. The main issue I have with Dancer <laughs> is it's really RNG heavy. It is based off of coin flips, even more so than than. Uh, Red Mage. And they're, they're going on. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it, it's a thing. It is a... It's still a fine class. It was very a welcome change. Yes. Um, but now, on to... Uh, in our keeping our, our conversation flow. The solo raids. The Eden raid. The normal raids. The, Don't say solo, because you're not soloing so, No, you're Eden. solo party. Light party. Light party. Full, full party. You're a full party against uh, in the Eden Raid, which is just a giant Final Fantasy VIII reference. Like, you start by fighting Eden, which is usually what you finish a raid with. Yeah, um, Final Fantasy, it also brings in Final Fantasy VIII's character designer to design the new character for the raid. Good old Tetsuya Nomura. With Gaia, who the fan base really likes. Yeah, no, she's awesome. I love her, uh, but mind you, the fan base also really wants her to step on them. I mean, look, the more is out of his belt face, but he's into his big boot face. Okay, but you say that, right? But we already had Yotsuyu last expansion, so is that really that much of a surprise? True. The the, the community is. Yotsuyu so so literally was stepping on people. But, um, the guy, the Eden Raid's really interesting, and the final boss is fucking wild. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's so good. It, it's really good, it's heartfelt, and the music is gorgeous. Uh, there's fucking Flame Wingman. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's fucking Elemental Hero Flame Wingman, I cannot stress this enough. Am I Robin wrong? A, Robin becomes a horse. It's uh, it's wild. It's, it's so fun though. I do recommend playing it. Um, then there mm. is the alliance raids with the guest writer, and, the uh, madman, and the madman that is Yoko Taro. Now, now, despite us saying, despite us sounding excited, uh. Well, it is very sad. It's very much in line with Yoko's writing. However, it doesn't quite 
fit right. It doesn't really fit right into 14, which the best way I can say is Yoko and Yoshi in the rank styles. Yoko would be a good writer before Yoshi because he Yoko will do, does a very good job setting up a world to be rebuilt, where Yoshi's very good at rebuilding a world. Yeah. Now, this is nothing against the raids themselves. The raids themselves are actually fantastic. Oh, they're very fun raids. And it's very it's a good thing above all that Yoko still had MMO veterans behind him making sure because Yoko doesn't have experience with MMOs. He mostly is single players with Dragon Guard, Near, and so on. And uh, yeah, there's a very good reason why he was told no for certain parts of the. Of but the raid. overall, both teams seem to have enjoyed the experience. Yeah, it was it was a fun experience for both sides. I'd um, imagine. If I may say, like, it isn't like a full blown nihilistic ending. Like if we want that, we want like pathologic, or we'll be talking about uh, the original ending, the Evil Dead Army of Darkness. Yeah, like, those, yeah, those are actually nihilistic. Like there's no hope. Everything's dead. Yeah, no. I will say, if you do, do the weekly continuation of the near raid it gets to a very dark place yeah. to the point where i feel like a suicide warning should actually be in be put in place yeah. because yeah 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 um i it's still very good content though um the armor sets are amazing uh there's it also started um the first piece of armor that that met the demands of the Final Fantasy XIV community. Oh my god. <laughs> the butt slider. And ever since, people still won't stop talking about it. For those who are unaware, um, there's the 2B Glam set. It had a glitch when it was first introduced that um, characters' asses were phasing through seats and that people then proceeded to realize that the, it was making their asses fuller. Yeah, because of course... When you're wearing the 2B tights, of course you're getting that booty. You know Yoshi and Yoko had to be laughing when they designed that. <laughs> Which, you know what? That's fine. People are allowed to stare at their characters' asses. They're doing it so much during the course of the game. It's gonna be happening anyway. I mean, I'm seeing her as a rabbit there with white hair with red highlights because the red highlights are supposed to be blood because I'm the killer rabbit from Mighty Python motherfuckers yeah. I have said that and people don't know what the fuck I'm talking about I feel old Ugh. but um there is one other thing before we get to the um, one other bit of extra content because we haven't really talked about the um side trials like uh, the Warren yes. Triad but this one in particular it had some really I which I hate that we didn't mention Warring Triad because it ties into a different part of content, which we didn't mention. I do uh, but for the... Storm for Shadowbringers. True. Um, there is one thing about Shadowbringers: they have removed, for the most part, removed job quest lines, where now it is specifically tied to roles. Which this there's is still not job important. like. There's still like the first ten levels, job quest line for, for uh, Gunbreaker and Dancer, but other jobs will don't have much of a quest line in Shadowbringers because, well, I mean, we're in a whole different world. We can't really progress with the plot lines of the people that we already befriended. Yeah, and based on what um, Yoshi has said, that is not changing in Walker. Yeah, which. I believe he actually I'm said in sure. Endwalker there's no new job classes and um, quests. Besi besides Sage no, and no, besides Sage and Reaper. Reaper. Yeah. I'm assuming say. he didn't say anything on Sage and Reaper, but he said there were no new ones for the existing classes. What I imagine is it's gonna be the same thing as Shadowbringers. I would say <clears throat> well, no, even he said there was no level nineties either. No level nineties. Huh. No level nineties. It's all Endwalker story. Okay. Well, yeah, that that brought up my point about the once you finish a role quest line, which you need to finish at least one to complete Shadowbringers. That is one mandatory thing about it. Um, 
Once you do complete a job, a role quest line in Shadowbringers, you get an item that helps you progress through that you are needed to give to an NPC to progress in, in like near end game content. Near end of base Shadowbringers. Yeah. Which is okay. It's okay. Yeah, no. It gives the incentive, at least. And I imagine the same thing is going to be going on with Endwalkers. I was say, yeah, I think it's probably going to be the same there. But, um... The one I want to talk about with these was in particular... Like, don't worry, I, I like the Warring Triad. I think the Warring Triad is great. But nothing, none of them compares to the weapon quest line. Uh, the and weapon ending. quest line. Oh, that we ending. We didn't talk about warnings. We were talking about the weapon quest line. Yeah, yeah, it, it's fucked up. There, there, there's child abuse. There's all kinds of cra it, crazy shit. Oh, there, there is legitimately someone who physically abuses children and their siblings. In terms of the fights, Not, okay. we don't, we didn't, don't get a full showing of it, thankfully. But oh boy, it's the torture. the main antagonists of the weapons quest line is a right bastard. And he gets what's coming to win in a fucking amazing way. Oh yeah, he gets like, what he gets his. The ending for Endwalker, or for the Diamond Quest, oh not Diamond Quest, for the weapon quest line is great, but uh, it, I it's great, really, it's sad, it's great, it's sad. I will also, the trials themselves are all really good. There are three trial fights for four weapons. The one yeah, of the weapons, about. One of the weapons gets its own solo instance fight. Which is so, so satisfying. It's a fucking Gundam! And, and I will mention, if you're going to be doing this quest line, I would recommend doing a hard mode version of a dungeon that appeared back in Heaven's Word. Because it's where you get the mech. Um... Explain, like, I want to guess real quick about the, the thing you get to use the mech. Because um, there are two main features of the mech besides the main combo. There is a diamond shield it creates that's impenetrable. And then an overburst mode where you turn red. The diamond shield is a reference to New Gundam's funnel shield of a deploy to block attacks. And then the turning red for the power boost was in particular. And it also you get surrounded by particles when you do it. I believe it's a reference to trans man. Trans Am from Gundam Double O, yeah. um, which in Double O you the suit would have a three times performance before crashing hard. Yeah. But um, for anyone who's never been on my channel long enough, I'm a sucker for Mobile Suit Gundam. You're you're obsessed. I'm a Gunpla freak. Yes, yes, you I'm are. I'm not as far as the Beijing though. <laughs> oh okay. God. Oh okay, God. Okay. Move moving on, moving on because. Now, before we get into Gumpla, on um, the Southern Front. Yes, and, the Boston Southern Front, and by extension, the Resistance, resistance Weapons. Oh boy! Uh, I think the entire community has a love hate relationship with the Resistance Weapons. They look really cool, but like any other relic weapon, oh boy, it's gonna be taking you a while to build that up. So. The Southern Front was a war, is a war zone, which I actually that handles itself a lot like Eureka. You are, you're given a completely separate level system called Metal. That's um, with a that's with two T's, by the way, yeah. over T. Um, basically, as you fight, you'll build renown, rank, all that good shit, and then you will get promoted. The more promotions you get, the more stuff you can use, etc., etc. Essentially, you're you're just helping the Bosjans reclaim some of their homeland. It feels like a legitimate war zone. Yeah, I mean... Oh. The environment helps, the music, the fact that you're fighting from the ground up. And then the entire time in the background, you are working on a set of weapons called the Resistance Weapons. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to go back. Um, the Resistance Weapons are remakes of old Bajan weapons 
there's one for each class, and as you keep building them, they eventually build into the blade weapons. I personally only finished one blade weapon. It's my red mages. I'm not going through that shit again. It's... Uh, the the end tier grinding for the weapons is some of the worst. Like, I would say the blades, it's sad. The, the one for the blades itself, like the final tier, isn't even the worst. I gotta say, the worst is when you get to. Do, 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 do. I believe it's. Augmented Law Order, I like to say it once. Basically, you had to. Run this special raid connected to the front front multiple times. It, it was so annoying. I think it's only. But if I remember correctly, I think that's only a one time thing. I'm sorry, I disappeared. No, no, it's all good. I'm trying. I'm just saying how like the the, worn... the final stuff for the blades isn't even the most annoying. Yeah, it, it's, it's the time worn relics. It's the time worn relics. I think you'll have to do that once though. Uh, I think the time worn relics is once, and then you just do dungeon run, raid runs for the other parts for it. Or you let me let me uh... double. Ch don't quote us on that. I like I said, we've only done it once. I, the, I I want to I want to fact check this. Yeah, fact check it because I'm only recalling. Because uh, certain steps you only have to do once. Other times, other steps you have to do multiple times. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. the southern run is very interesting. It's a bunch of Final Fantasy well references. Yeah. But Unfortunately, grass. it's also going to be the end of Final Fantasy twelve reference content it seems yeah it looks like we're done with the southern front yeah i mean i'd like to go back to bajra at some point but it seems like it's not going to be like as much of a direct reference to 12 anymore yeah which uh -huh. is kind of disappointing because they were leading up to basically having the 12 plot line yeah i don't know if they're gonna get to it they might do it later Maybe. But for now... I mean, who knows? Because we're going into new territory after Endwalker. Yeah. So... Oh, pull, pull a fast one. Lightning shows up. Again. <laughs> and not as an event character. But... Yeah, uh... And, like I said, Shadowbringer was the first one... First expansion we experienced as it was coming out. We, we got to experience all the new content with everyone else when as it was dropping. Seeing mm -hmm. the new jobs, seeing how the jobs were reworked. It, it's been great. And now, as of, well, as of this upload, we are getting ready to embark into Endwalker finally. Yep. Oh. Um, we will not... I'll say this right now because I, I do plan on streaming during the OX period. I do not plan on doing any story content. I have told this to you, Sean, and I I don't think I've said this on, I think I said this on stream. I do not plan on doing any story content until the, the drop of Endwalker. My reason being is I want to experience Endwalker with everyone else. And you know what? That's fair. But I will go back to the Crystarium and trade in all my own... Well, not the Crystarium. Go back to the one area and trade in all my tomes to get Poetics. Mm hmm. And buy the rest of the um, Crypt Lurk and Deep Sh and Crystarium gear. True. Like, that's the thing. That's why I haven't been, like. I went out of my way to, to grind for Tome Sense for the other sets. I'm not going out of my way for Crypt Lurk because I know it's going to be converting in the. Uh, Yay. Because Crypt Lurk armor is very nice. Or at least some of it is. Mm hmm. But. With that, uh, do you have any uh, ending thoughts you want to share? I think I'm good. With that, 
Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this little retrospective series, I guess you could say, of the four, oh, of all the main expansions for Final Fantasy XIV. And I hope to see some of you over on the Twitch side for when we do end walk. Mm hmm. Okay, it looks like. Yeah, it seems like. Uh... Time warns more than once. Yeah. Ah! <laughs>